Jumbo. Praise God. All right, let's work on that. If I say Jumbo, you say Jumbo back. Jumbo. When I say praise God, you say amen. Praise God. That's how they greet each other a lot in public when they're doing public speaking and so forth. Just in a general gathering or in, uh, in church, what have you. It is definitely my privilege to be here today to talk about the Kenya team of six plus two, essentially, for our trip to Kenya uh, to fulfill the commission. This, was a, this is another version of the Great Commission that you heard me read earlier from the book of Matthew. This is the version from the book of Luke. Bring them all together and you have the full commission that's there that Jesus spoke. Various circumstances have led us as a church, a St. Andrew Lutheran Church, to respond to the call for the need uh, of mission support work in Kenya. We don't need to go over and do this because they're, because of they're not doing it. They're doing it. But we can bring them so much encouragement and so much support and, and lift them in what they are doing. Jeff Fanger, is Jeff here? Jeff, would you stand, please? Thank you. Very good, Jeff. Jeff went with me in February as a, as advanced team. And uh, we traveled uh, to Kenya at, uh, to, uh, to determine what we would do and where we would do it. We went there to ask and, and, to, and to seek their advice. And uh, Pastor Shawin Trump, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod missionary assigned to Kenya and Tanzania, is our primary partner and support person. Some of you already keep up with him and his ministry. We had connections with him. And that's part of what led us to this, to this country. We as a church have committed ourselves to Congregation Connect, which means we are committed uh, to several short-term mission trips to Kenya for a long-term commitment, that long-term commitment being five years. The short-term mission trips being about 10 days, more or less. Uh, we've uh, just completed one of those trips. The, uh, the Kenya team of six, if we can put the picture up, uh, you will see... Uh, Gene and I there on the left, and then moving over, uh, the, the plus two would be Timothy and Megan Dooms, and then Pastor Trump is there in the middle with his son Josiah, his wife Krista, and then you see Joyce Miller uh, continuing to move over, and then Reno Anderson, Jim Hicks, and Rod Lowther. Uh, that was our, our full team. Um, wanted you to see that, and you're going to be hearing from, from each of those this morning. If the team wants to begin to come up and begin to get ready for your sharing, please do that. Um, they're looking at each other now. Yes, now would be a good time to do that. Uh, it was our privilege to go on behalf of you as members of St. Andrew and respond to our Lord's mission call. We always felt safe. We felt in no danger any time in our trip or our work or our stay. Uh, we uh, were blessed uh, by a great deal. The Refugee situation that is happening due north of where we were by several hundred miles up on the northern border of Kenya toward Somalia uh, did not spill down into our area. We were not part of that. But I will assure you that our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran World Federation, and the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Kenya are partnering together to work with that refugee situation. So our church body is involved in working with that. But that was not anything, had nothing to do with what we were doing. We did join with the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Kenya, a full partner church with us, in, in working with these mission sites. And it is that church that we have come to partner with and to help lift their ministry and to encourage them uh, in, in the work that they are doing. And, and evidently, we're able to have great effect for them. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, we were in church at the site of the children's home, uh, the Faraja children's home in Wema. Uh, for worship, we can throw up that next picture. I was the, the preacher for that service. You can't see a whole lot of me there, but I've got my paper bag and my balloon. If you've seen that illustration, I'm using that to, to share the gospel and using the gospel outline. I actually wore a collar that day because it's a very formal country and uh, pastors wear collars, particularly when they preach. Uh, but that's our, we all had translators and we were all working with that. Uh, our team has a story to tell. And I see Jean already has the mic. Very good. Jean is ready for the mic, and they have her listed first. So, Jean. Okay. Jumbo. 
Jambo means welcome or hello. They say it all the time. Everybody shakes hands from the littlest to the biggest and they just stand there and wait till you shake their hand and say Jambo. Very friendly, very open people. But I want to tell you a little story about the first day that we were in each village. It was a sharing day. They call it a witnessing day. I don't know about you, but that kind of puts terror in my heart to think that we're all going to witness to people in another country that don't necessarily that don't speak our language, but we do have translators, and I wasn't alone. There were two people from the local church at each place. There were two people that we call the New Brew people. They are Lutheran Hour Ministry people that are fabulous. They were with us for two weeks, taught me beyond belief the things that I needed to know to survive and did it well. Anyway, so we, the assignment was to be gone for about two and a half hours and to visit ten homes, which were huts thatched, I mean dirt kind of thing. Well, we're walking down the road and you got to watch where you're walking because it's all dirt and there are holes and there's, you know, well, you keep walking. I thought, where are the houses? I don't know where they are. I can't figure this out. And then we came across this little bitty path that if you put your feet together, it might stay on it. And we followed these little paths off into the bush. And before we got too far along, we heard children laughing and playing, and sure enough, there was our first hut. And unfortunately, the, the man and the woman were sleeping on outside of their mud stick house. And um, I thought, well, we, sure, we really shouldn't bother them. We should just go on. We're probably going to come back this way, and we'll just pick them up on the way back. No, I was with Nuru people. You do not do that. You are there to witness, and they're there to listen. And so the the lady kind of woke up, and, you know, she didn't speak English, but they were speaking Swahili, so, you know, there was a little jumbo and stuff going on. And uh, the man was dead asleep. And they go, sir, wake up, wake up. They wouldn't let him sleep. They kept saying, wake up, wake up. And I'm thinking, if you're in the States, you're going to be shot by this time. But... <laughs> You know, and I'm thinking, maybe we ought to move on. I was getting a little nervous about all this. And eventually the man, he, after about the third try, you know, of pushing us away, and we weren't going, he got up. And these people, the thing that impressed me the most is the reason they did that is not because they are rude. It's because they have a passion and an urgency to share Jesus and his love. And they want everybody to know. Everybody they meet every day. And that had a huge effect on me. You know, we know Jesus. We know what he has done for us. We are believers and we're living in the joy of that. But we don't have that passion. And we certainly don't have that urgency. And so what I would suggest is that the passion and the faith that we have within us that we allow the Lord to build that and build a fire in that and the urgency in that so that every day, every person, everywhere we go, they know that we love Jesus and they can too and what Jesus has done for them. And maybe we will see our country be Christian again. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Rod Lowther. First of all, I would like to thank the congregation for giving me this opportunity beyond belief. It is, uh, I had some very meaningful experiences. The most meaningful to me was I had a leader that was an evangelist. Uh, his name was Peter. He had walked six kilometers to get to our area that we started out of. That's, the, that's Peter up there on the screen, by the way. And we went, started going into the small paths. As you can see, I'm a big guy. The small paths were <laughs> a little narrow in some places. And we come upon a village that had uh, a woman and three children and no husband. And Peter started evangelizing uh, to her. And you could see him patting his heart and talking to her. And at that time, I felt God's presence. Come to me and see 
what it really means to witness, to be among the people that you don't understand their language, but you can feel God's movement in there. Also, I, the next picture, you'll see me a big guy jumping <laughs> rope. Now, this, this was an accomplishment in its own. <laughs> uh, they had me running around circles and everything like that. Uh, the kids were all laugh, had a good time. They all wanted to play football, which is soccer. And all you would hear is bolly, bolly, bolly. That was their rec time. They wanted, the girls even wanted to play soccer. They, they would actually uh, yell, scream, and have a good time. I also would like to take a moment to thank the team for accepting me into their, uh, their fold. I could not have done any of this without them. God bless. Thank you, Rod. Reno Anderson. You know how in Spanish there's that word mañana, which kind of means, you know, putting it off till sometime in the future? Well, I talked to an African friend of mine once about that word, and he said, well, you know, in Africa, we don't have any such word with that sense of urgency. You guys yeah. didn't get it. <laughs> well, that sense of urgency, yeah. Okay, there's no word like mañana because everything in Africa is Africa time, which is different than our English time. However, when I was helping out in the crafts class, I was very surprised to have Ruth, Mama Ruth uh, of the Menzamwenye village come and grab my hand and say, come see, come see. And we ran together over to the cookhouse, which was a very small little hut. It looks bigger on that picture than it really is, but a very small little hut. And there was two fires going on inside of the hut. The uh, pot on the left with the white ugali in it took three women to stir that up to feed 200 people. And where they're stirring right now is some goat meat that they'll be serving to the 200 uh, plus people that will be there for that first uh, vacation Bible, the second vacation Bible school. So the women asked me, have you ever uh, cooked like this before? <laughs> I said, well, not for this many people. <laughs> At each village, I spent two afternoons with the mamas and uh, to give a life and faith seminar and to, to teach a craft. Uh, at each place, God sent me some visiting angels. In Memwe, I uh, asked two Christian Kenyan social workers who just happened to be visiting the orphanage that day to add to my classes. And they did it wonderfully, talking about things like children's rights and about AIDS and chigger toes, all very real issues there. In Menzamwenye, I asked Miriam, who was an evangelist and the wife of the manager of the orphanage, to speak. And she taught a very powerful lesson to the women about trusting God and used the uh, story of the widow in the jar of oil. On the second day, I spent a few hours fielding questions about anatomy and quality of life. And uh, the women put their crochet hooks uh, away for uh, that particular part of the lesson because they said now we're speaking about important things. The questions that they asked show that they had very little uh, education, a few resources available to them, but they were all hungry to hear the Word of God, hungry to learn how to read and write, and hungry for information that would improve their quality of life. Many of the women that we met were Muslim women, but yet they were still open to hear the Word of God. I gave a Swahili Bible to a very tall Muslim woman who was eager to talk. I would ask that you pray for her. Her name is Asha. And uh, pray that God would touch her heart through this Bible in her own language and through the witness of a Christian neighbor named Clements, whom I got to know. And just a little side note as well is we also, when we were visiting, we, we met a lot of people, and one man said that he did not want us to pray for him. And I thought, well, that was kind of unusual. He said, well, I'm a drunkard. He said, and I know if you pray for me, he said that God will take that thirst for alcohol away from me, and I'm not quite ready to do that yet. <laughs> so I said, you know what, I'm glad you believe in the power of prayer and we're going to be praying for you anyway. So pray for the drunkard as well. <laughs> Thank you, Reno. Joyce Miller. Jumbo. Jumbo. Praise God. Amen. Back a few months ago, I came home from work and I had this message on my answering machine. And this is what it said. Joyce, I want you to go on a mission trip to Kenya, Africa. And specifically, I want you to be the arts and crafts lady for a Bible school to be held for the Kenyan children in two different locations. 
Well, needless to say, this took me back. I had never really given any serious thought to visiting Africa. Of course, I knew where Africa was. Uh, and I really didn't feel that I was worthy or capable. After a long, uh, after some hard thinking, coming to church and looking at a video, I finally made the decision that, well, needless to say, when you get a direct call, you must go. So I went. We did a number of crafts projects with the children. Probably the best one was a bracelet, which several of us are wearing, with beads. This bracelet told a Bible story. Each child was given a three strands of yarn to braid, and lo and behold, they knew how to braid. We were concerned about that. Then colored beads were threaded on the braid. The first bead is black, which stands for spiritual darkness because of sin. The second bead is red, which represents the blood Jesus shed to pay for our sins. Third bead is white, which is forgiveness for those who trust in Christ. The fourth bead is blue, which stands for baptism. The next bead is green, and that is for spiritual growth. And finally, the last bead is yellow, representing heaven and the glory of Christ. The Kenyan children were very shy at first, and the small ones were afraid of us. If we would get too close, they wanted to cry. But very shortly, they became friendly and enthusiastic, and they would have made more than one bracelet had we had the materials to do it. At the end of each arts and crafts session, if we had time, we would get out the drums, and immediately some of the young boys would rush forward and they would start beating out a rhythm. And at the same time, all the children would start clapping. Then one of the girls, many times a very small girl, would start singing out a line and the entire group would answer back. This was a glorious, happy sight and a magnificent sound of praise to God. This little Lutheran church in Kenya, Africa, made of sticks, mud, and st rocks, was a rockin'. Praise God. Asante. Asante. Wow. Thank you, Joyce. Jim Hicks. Well, it was my privilege and honor to go on your behalf and to work with kids. And it was uh, fun to note that kids are kids, whether they're here in America or in Kenya. They love to play. Uh, they love to sing. They're eager to learn. And it was my privilege, and this is a picture from our first site at Wema, the Faraja Children's Home. We had about 160 children with us. Uh, about 120 of them were Muslims from the neighborhood. And my partner was Joffrey from Nairobi, part of the Nuru Lutheran Hour Ministries. And he and I had a wonderful time leading kids in song, teaching, and... Uh, one afternoon, we used uh, resurrection eggs to tell the story of the passion of Jesus, from his entry to Jerusalem, through his cru crucifixion to his resurrection. And uh, uh, they were mildly interested as we began. But as we began to share the word of God, you can see what happened. They moved closer and closer. Uh, and by the end of that story, we had 50 heads surrounding us pressing in, eager to learn the Word of God, eager to learn the good news of Jesus Christ, crucified and risen as our Savior. And it was my privilege to take that message from you uh, to those children in Kenya uh, who are eager to know the Word of God. And so thank you for the privilege of uh, sharing with kids there and here. Thank you, Jim, and thank you, team. Very much. All of this was made possible by, number one, our Lord, our, our loving God, and His empowering us to be able to carry out what we believe is, is His command to be witnesses, not only here in Cape Girardeau, which we're seeking to grow more and more in doing, and not only just in our region, but also around the world, and this is part of our world outreach. And, and of course, made possible by the team's response to the call. And number two, to your generous donations to the What If campaign and your continued generous offering donations. So thank you so very much. And with the support and assistance of the Lutheran Church uh, Missouri Synod World Missions that we are a part of, that we are partnering with them. Uh, one of the pictures that we have is me with John Mena, the executive director of Nuru. 
Uh, that Nuru is, is the Swahili word for the Lutheranar ministry group that is there. That is their title. Lutheranar Ministries. That is based in St. Louis. The Lutheranar is part of that. Uh, an incredible ministry. But I have a whole new growing respect for that ministry because they were such partners with us in our witnessing experiences and they were right there with us in all the various activities that we were carrying on. Uh, we partnered with the pastors of the churches in the area and they worked so well together with each other as well as with us, the church evangelists and the church leaders and uh, of, of all those churches, the, particularly the two churches we worked with, and then all the village mamas that did all that wonderful cooking and all the hosting that they did for us was just incredible. We did have the opportunity to deliver the dresses that a number of you were instrumental in, in, in making. Uh, we delivered those dresses and they were received with thanks. Uh, some unfinished work is that the Vacation Bible School here uh, was raising money for cows. Uh, the cows have not yet been purchased because, and some of you have made some uh, private donations toward those cows. We're working with the Heifer Project and trying to get the price of those cows at a, at a reasonable price. They turned out to be higher than what we had expected, what we had been told. Uh, so we're still negotiating that activity, but uh, Lord willing, that will be happening. Please hear this next comment. The next trip is next year, February, March. We're looking for that trip to be a medical mission type trip and also drill a borehole in Mezzanwini, one of the churches where we were working. That is a water well. That trip, mission trip, will be to assist Kenya doctors uh, who will be our supervisors. So our doctors and nurses will work under them. We will use, we'll get all of our medications and equipment over there. We won't have to take stuff with us uh, across the border. That is the best way to do that, we have learned. And any of you can go and assist and be a part of this. There will be much work to be done. We took, uh, six of us went this time. We'd like to at least double that number on our next trip. So please look at that and hear this as the initial calling of you uh, to be a part of this mission trip as we go and, and work with this because this gives great witnessing opportunities to these villages in which we're able to serve. Would you join with me in prayer? And if the music team wants to come forward for your closing. Our loving Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this incredible opportunity. Would you bless the work that we were blessed by you uh, and this congregation to do? Would you continue to extend it uh, by your presence, their uh, most precious Holy Spirit? Continue, Lord, to enable us as a congregation to be open and ready uh, for this next trip, for the opportunities that you have before us. We ask that you continue to embolden us with our own witnesses around us where we are and our own families and our communities, our work, our, wherever it is that you would lead us to be ready to witness the good news of you, Lord Jesus Christ, and what you mean to this world. And this is a great day, Lord, on this uh, anniversary of 9-11, to be ready to be filled with something really significant, good news, uh, not just for the day, but for eternity. And we have something to share. So, Lord, enable us so to do it and continue to bless our mission work. It's in your strong name, Lord Jesus, that we pray as we give thanks. Amen.